And you record it. it's recording. Thank you. Very it's much. a cloud recording. It's what, sorry? A cloud recording. It seems so. Perfect. I don't see the differences between the two. So yeah, it should be fine. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you for joining everyone in this discussion about the group level dashboard. I um, put in the, um, in the calendar invite uh, a link to the document that was the one already used uh, to discuss about the dashboard in general. And I'd like to add uh, a, a new section today about our discussion on the group level security dashboard. The discussion is not just about the dashboard, uh, but also on the data model and uh, the artifact parsing that are the source, the, the information source for the dashboard itself. So I put in the document uh, at the top uh, three main points I'd like to address today. They are strictly related and we just need to figure out uh, if we have all the information for those and if, uh, uh, you know, they are talking together well, one with each other. So if uh, we have all the information from one point to the, to the other one. The, the first one is the final incremental design. Incremental is just because uh, even if we are very, very uh, confident that we can have everything done by this iteration, I, I still like to have, uh, you know, an incremental development. So if we cannot do all the features that we are considering as part of this first uh, iteration MVC, uh, we can still get something. So my proposal is that um, the very first thing to do is the top summary with the, with the big numbers, you know, in the colored boxes or so critical and high uh, and so on. And that's the, the very first thing to, to work on. Then we have uh, the list of issues. So the, the second part, uh, uh, just at the bottom of the summary, where uh, just the list. So what can be similar, very similar to the, to the actual security report. Then we have the action items in the list. So the ability to uh, create an issue from there, to dismiss the issue from there. And then, uh, filters that still need some uh, you know, discussion and how to figure out exactly what we want to filter, what the filters will affect. So I suppose this is the, the right sequence of things. All of them are intended to be part of this iteration, but just in case, this is the, the priority order inside the same iteration. I'll, uh, I think that the, the graphics are completely out of this situation, so we don't even have to discuss. Uh, I know that there is already uh, an issue and uh, a possible design for them, but we don't have to, to take time to, to implement it in this situation. It is absolutely too much otherwise. The second point is the source of the information, so the database. Uh, we still need to completely uh, figure out uh, the structure, or maybe probably Olivier and Fabian already, uh, have a very good understanding of that. I like them to share with us so we know exactly which are the, the numbers uh, and information available. And uh, the second point is how to put data into these tables. Uh, so how to parse artifacts, how to store uh, the artifacts that are coming via the CICD pipeline into the database itself. It is something very, very similar probably to what GUnit is doing up to the parsing. But JUnit, as far as I know, is not storing data into the, the database itself. They're just parsing and consuming artifacts uh, you know, live at the moment, case by case. So it's still something that we need to figure out. And even here, it's totally fine if we can just start with one of the types categories, I don't remember, uh, which was the, the final name agreed. So dependency scanning probably or SAST uh, could, could be a very good, uh, good spot. Obviously everything will adapt. So as soon as we are able to add more parsers for artifacts, it should be absolutely transparent for users and we don't have to change obviously everything again. The third point, the, the last one is the API, the interaction between the front end and the back end. I uh, consider two main points for them. So the first one is the page load, uh, what you need to build up the initial page. 
And then uh, the second point is user interactions. For example, when you want to create an issue and you want to dismiss something, if you click on a filter and you want to filter on something. These are, in my opinion, uh, the, the points we have to, to address today in order to get the final design. They are almost done, all of them, but uh, just to finalize. So uh, we can also discuss you know, the technical possible solution implementation and probably the front end uh, and the back end uh, have to align. For example, if you want to do it dynamically with Vue.js or if uh, the filters and the list that uh, could be uh, partly a reuse from existing code. And so it means that you have some constraint coming from the existing code that you have to take in, uh, into account. And thank you, Lucas, for, for being here. I know that Sam is the, the one assigned. We were mm, suggesting or considering uh, a switch, but understand that until we don't have, you know, an agreement on that, you will be probably uh, just taking a look uh, and uh, um, maybe Sam but, will- But additionally, yeah. now that UX is not done, um, it's fine. Um, I'm, I, I, I really agree with the strategy you um, outlined. And um, I think, you know, I probably finished the other deliverables first. And so I think I also can support Sam because for example, take creating the top thing and creating the list can be uh, done separately, right? So, um, yeah. That's perfect. So, uh, sorry for interrupting. No problem, absolutely. Uh, as I uh, already remember that in a very multiple places, this is the top feature for 11.4. Uh, so I will push everyone a little, you know, in the, in the fair, in the polite way. And that's just because uh, I really think that we, uh, shipping this in 11.4 is a very important uh, thing for the company for the product, for our team. Uh, so let's start with the you know, discussion and probably the, the first point is exactly uh, engin about engineers talking. So I don't know, Andy or Lucas and Fabian, if you want to jump in and start the talk. Uh, do you guys yeah. wanna see uh, just the design so far? You wanna start with that? Yeah, maybe just yeah. go over it uh, really quick to remind us all. Yeah, um, let me just share my screen. So it's changed a bit, but it's only changing because it's reusing elements we have. So we're not gonna be creating too much more. Uh, everyone see this? Yep. Okay. Um, so at the top, we have the big numbers um, color-coded based on G2's uh, new designation for how we're gonna you know, call out critical high medium low and unknown um and then you start to move down you'll see how we can start filtering by source type and we can even keep the count of the source in there if we want um and then you, by clicking this it will change all of this um the idea is not to change this at the moment because i know fleep and sarah we kind of went back and forth on like does this filter this does this filter this i think it's just easier if we just leave these alone um, once the user starts, you know, working the list and working with these counts, if they want to, they're going to be focused on this area. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, as we move forward past the MVC, you'll start seeing how these might become a little more dynamic. Um, but for now, we're not, we're not going to make these dynamic, um, at least in my mind. Um, and then we have filters for severity, confidence, project identifier. Um, and then our Boolean for dismissed. Um, and then we have a sort feature. So you can sort by last detected, which is our date. Um, you can sort by severity level um, and many other things if we decide there should be more <laughs> confidence, right? Other things, vulnerability name, I don't think so. Um, and then uh, we'll paginate because loading this you know, long list won't make sense. So um, maybe 10, maybe a little more if we, if there's a standard practice we want to adhere to. Um, and then you have the ability to reset the filters. Um, so thoughts, questions, comments? Oh, okay. yes, I, I yes. have a bunch. Yeah. So. Oh. <laughs> Raise your hands. <laughs> oh, I, will, I will take notes and do all okay, stuff, so. so I'm just going to start. First thing, yeah. you can filter by project, but I don't see the project anywhere. Yeah. Um, First one. And what's filtering by identifier? Yes, those are my two questions. 
Okay, identifier was pulled up in the issue as something that we can um, and could possibly uh, yeah, sort by. You have to really know what's what means the different property it, of, it of be vulnerability. Like CVE minus blah blah or yeah, yeah, oh, okay. and this is really like the project. You may you may have a lot of uh, potential. Um, uh, results for, for this kind of filters mm -hmm. and you potentially can filter by multiple identifiers like same as multiple projects so I don't know how it will fit with this uh, design compared to the yeah. uh, stackable filters mm -hmm. in the issues list and what's, what, uh, what about that column would also be missing right now because if I I don't know I I don't know all the CVEs by head, right? And now I have no way to select one. I, I would, for example, see, okay, the medium insecure variable is CVE 5000, um, but I don't know it now. I would have to open the model, right? Yeah, and you have to start typing because this is dynamic data. We don't have this all in database. Every, every data we have from the vulnerabilities is coming from the report. So, we don't have anything in database except from the sources and okay. the confidence and severity level, which are uh, normalized values. But yeah. everything else is coming from the report. So for the identifiers, it can be a lot, a lot of different values. Maybe we can narrow down the options so that it's about only common identifiers like CVE or CWE and remove every um, Vendor specific identifiers like find same bugs, uh, one, two, three, four, or break mine 24. I don't know. Could, could we mark the identifier as optional for the MVC then? Because we have control over severity, confidence, and project. We and could. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the need for the user would be eventually you get an email notification about uh, there is a common indication that has just been disclosed. This is a CV one, two, three, four. And you go to your dashboard and you type this to know which of your projects are impacted by that specific vulnerability. This was the intended usage, but we could okay. eventually move it back to, to the next iteration. It's not a, a big problem. Okay. Yeah, so oh. I also feel that identifiers should not be, you know, here. And uh, in, in general, a, we have to stick with what we have as columns in the database. Hmm. And also that is missed. I'm not sure we want to show it there, even because uh, we are not allowing uh, filtering uh, for dismissed uh, in the reports. Um, so yes, could be an option, but I don't see it to be a very top priority for, for this filtering option. For showing dismissed? Yeah, so we can... I think it would be beneficial because then we could get rest, uh, rid of the dismissed items <laughs> Uh, in the in the merge request views and on the normal report views, for example. Yeah, the, the thing is that currently this feature is really not readable. So I, I feel the value to just don't be annoyed and remove remove some noise from the view by removing the dismissed uh, vulnerabilities. This is great, but you have to know that currently this is a alpha or beta feature. I don't remember, and it's really not readable. And from one merge request to another. Some previously dismissed issues with uh, vulnerability history will come back, so may come back. So, we this is not something we want to push really hard uh, uh, to the user. So, if we need to remove something, this one could be removed too, I think. And also, the, the sorting uh, is this something that uh, is based on data that we have in the database? Because, uh, for yeah. example, that's detected, it means that we should have the, the last detected. Be. Everything you want to filter on must be from the database columns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yes, and that's why my, my question is, uh, and this I is the last attack that I don't know if, which are the other options there, but uh, it seems to me that we have to align the data should be in the database or we should not have that specific uh, uh, option in, mm -hmm. the, in the UI. We, we can don't, uh, remove uh, detected and keep that for severity. Um, project name uh, and confidence if we want and if we want any other ones we can keep that in there do, do we really need to you know are we still sorting by project or by uh, confidence isn't the severity uh, thing uh, the most important one we want to you know just to, to avoid some you know option you know that we like uh, 
uh, conventions of our configuration. So maybe we don't need at least not in the first uh, iteration, let's say. Mm -hmm. Just so trying to cut some no, scope. No, no, uh, no list in the third, first iteration, no, no ordering in the first iteration, you mean? Yeah, I, I feel that uh, sorting by severity is, you know, the default that should be. And if you are interested in the project level, you will jump to the project level dashboard uh, and not on the group level. But uh, as Lucas said, said, we don't have an indication of the project. And this is something that we, we should have. I don't know, for example, in issue, issue lists, uh, issue boards uh, at the group level at GitLab, you have near to the title, if I remember correctly, the project name. So you can easily get this information from uh, the list without opening, uh, without going uh, deep or filter. So that could be an option. And sorry, just a uh, very last question about uh, uh, this filter for now at least. Is okay. the, the drop down supposed to allow multiple values or is it just one value? Uh, if, it I want probably... to, if you want to have critical and high only. It should, it should be multiple. Yeah, that's a challenge I don't think we have solved for yet. Um, I know there's actually a concurrent drop down with sorting. Um, well, what's what's with the, uh, mm, is, isn't it also a challenge for the API then? Mm -hmm. Like if you have multiple severities and multiple projects, for example, um, do we support it in other places like getting all open issues and now open and closed issues at the same time doesn't make sense? Uh, <laughs> like all, all issues assigned to Fabienne and, and me. Yeah, I think if, you, we, if you have a filter on the issues list, you, you can add multiple filters from the same properties, multiple yeah. values from the same property. But they are in uh, and, not in or. Yes, yeah. That's, in this that's case, what I mean. probably we want an or between uh, different projects, multiple projects or yeah. multiple... Well, maybe severity is not really a thing because if you are ordering by severity and you are just interested in one of the severity, you can go down to the list up to the level you want. Yeah. Are you sure when you search for labels, it's and? Yeah, it's and. But here we probably want to use or. I, I just tried it out in a merge request. If I search for merge request authored by... Lucas iPod and authored by Olivier, I find nothing because it's an, yeah, it's, and. It's an and. And here we want an or because uh, all these values uh, just apply once uh, for, for each category, let's say for, for each kind of, uh, of property. So you will not, never have critical and uh, high on the same uh, vulnerability. But you may be interested in having a critical and uh, high. Uh, mm -hmm. So, okay, but I could be fine having just uh, one uh, value for each if it's very challenging from, uh, you know, the API and the, the, the backend. But just let's consider that uh, we, we should uh, follow up on this to figure out if it's really, you know, important. This filtering is solving a, sol a problem to users. So are users using this filtering option for something or it's just uh, something we are adding, but there is no value in it because nobody will use. They will just uh, scroll up to the point they want. If it's like that, we don't need the filter in this way. So it's, uh, it's just avoid putting a, a complexity into the feature that users will never benefit of. Do we want to hold off on having the sort feature for this version in that case? Uh, the sort, I'd say yes. Uh, to remove it? Yeah, even because uh, we, I think we don't have this data into the database. Yeah. And uh, the filtering, uh, we, we should keep it. Uh, and if it's uh, hard to have multiple values, because it's not uh, a standard pattern we are having at GitLab, we can have one selection for each of them. And obviously, the all uh, or uh, no, no filter, I don't know, when, when you go and you say any milestone, for example, in the initial list. Mm. Mm -hmm. But then I'd like uh, Andy and everyone else, obviously, to follow up uh, and to figure out if you can improve uh, the filtering in, in some way. Okay. I have another question. These, uh, what do these three links do? The one is uh, dismissing it, probably, right? 
what's uh, what's uh, the blue one and what's the what's the I jumped to it one? What do they do? Uh, so blue is create an issue, and then ah. this arrow out will actually take you to this modal. Well, the modal will pop up where you can see more information. I'm uh, sorry, Andy, but isn't that exactly the same mm, view you have if you click on the entry itself? Uh, I believe so. This is just based on G2's interactions he created for um, this. But there is currently no yeah. way to either go to the pipeline or merge request or, or is it just all on master? These uh, are for, for master report, for master uh, report for the master branch. Okay. And there is like no link to the commit that introduced it or something? Oh, uh, not as I can For example. See. No, okay. there is. But it could be a good follow-up. I don't know if we have this data into the... We have it, but it's not really yellow. It's like the, the date column. Uh, it's nice to have, but okay. you have to know that it's not something really reliable, at least for SAST. Yeah, so I'd say let's iterate on top of it and uh, let's yeah. add this link, uh, this information. But I really like uh, to understand if we need that, all the three buttons because I feel we just need two of them. The, the create an issue and the dismiss uh, and not uh, the... Um, details. You know, the, yeah, the details, you already should have them when you click on. I don't know if the new design is... Uh, changing also in the reports, uh, but in the reports at the moment you click, uh, yes, exactly there on the uh, vulnerability title, I don't know, vulnerability name, and you go to the details. So there is no meaning of having a, a specific button to open the same, uh, the same window. That, that's my takeaway, if I understand it correctly. I agree. Um, so that's maybe Andy, you, you, yeah, you, you can think maybe G2 to know maybe it was not considered, maybe he has a very different approach we are not seeing in, uh, in his proposal. Uh, yeah, I, I would assume that if, if you click on the wall row, you will have this uh, pop-up raising. Yeah. No, the, no, you can't do it on the wall row because otherwise you lose every other interactions. No, no, not on the wall row. Uh, the link, uh, the, the vulnerability name should be a link uh, like it yeah. is right now in the security reports in the merge request uh, widget, for example. And then you get details from there even because you're not jumping, it's not a commit or something you will jump to. Uh, so you open the, the box. And then Andy, this is a question for you. I'm not uh, uh, pushing in one direction or the other, but uh, I know <laughs> because of experience that uh, sometimes UX uh, said, uh, we don't want to have the same action twice in the UI. So in this specific case, we can dismiss uh, or create an issue from the list, uh, the, the full list itself, or from the details window. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm totally fine with it. I don't have a strong opinion against having multiple times because I can feel that maybe you are just seeing the list and click all of them because you don't need more details on vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. So opening one, uh, one by one and click dismiss, uh, it's a little, you know, time consuming. So I feel the value of uh, dismiss the issue from the full list. I just want to be sure that from a UX, uh, direction, I don't know, best practices, we are not doing something wrong that can create problems for the future. But it's completely, you know, up to the UX. So you can figure it out uh, and uh, comment. Yeah, I think we want to try to keep all the actions in the same area. Um, that's why you see G2 going to these uh, three buttons here as opposed to this, like clicking on a link and then clicking on two buttons. Um, I guess time will tell if that works because I think that's what might be getting implemented soon um, or not in 11.4, but um, that he's been working okay, sorry. on. Sorry, just to be clear, uh, yeah. I think that we have to remove the first button. I say yeah. message, button, obviously no, not prescriptive, but, and that's one thing because uh, as a user, I will click on the vulnerability name 100%. That's why I, 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 I think you as click as on the vulnerability name because at the moment you have no other way of opening that model. But yeah. for me, for example, I think users like having, you know, all the all actions that are available and in one place. Um, I, just just my opinion. So I just have the completely opposite opinion. Yeah, um, that's totally fine. Yeah. And then um, the, the, the second point is uh, it's fine to have 
the actions both uh, in the details and uh, in, the, in the list? My answer is yes, but I know that UX in the past uh, said no. So I just want uh, to be sure that we are not doing something you is uh, unwise uh, in, in this yeah. case. And it makes sense because it makes sense because if you want to dig into the vulnerability, you will open the pop up and then you you will have to yeah, close yeah, it know. and then uh, take the action. I agree on that. that I'm not saying so. I know for past experiences that this was yeah. not the, the good way, you know, to do things. But maybe in this case, it's totally fine. Just checking. Uh, a very last question about this. Uh, yeah, because we have what? three minutes. Um, yeah. Unless everyone is available for. Uh, I I can I can be on a call for another thirty minutes. If, uh, yeah, me too. Me too. If we have uh, better, we clear up all the questions. Uh, then schedule another call. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, is there a, a strong reason behind uh, having the violet uh, as the medium color? Because it, it feels to me a little, you know, out of uh, the. St I don't want to say the standard because probably there is no standard. But I normally see uh, from uh, red uh, to green uh, with. Uh, in a variety of uh, orange, yellow, uh, and not uh, uh, violet. And medium is not so, uh, you know, bad, but not so good uh, as well. So I will not uh, see it uh, as, as a priority, possible priority uh, with this color. I, I agree with Fabio. It really attracts the eye more than the critical ones, actually. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. That's the side effects. What about um, blue? Blue? Blue could work. We use blue for other elements. Um, yeah. Yellow won't work because you can't see it, uh, especially in these tags. So oh, that's, that's why we went from orange to purple. Uh, or I'm assuming G2 went. Again, this is based on G2's um, color like color scheme, and I like it. I like the way that like medium, it does pop a little bit. You're right. Um, it is also in the center. That doesn't help. Um, and when you're looking between yellow and um, red, purple does pop off. So um, we don't have a good color for it is currently the answer. <laughs> um, no, I, um, have, you, have you also checked for color blindness? Just saying. Um, I, yes. I have the simulation now open and it seems okay. The difference between low and high is not that good, but otherwise uh, um, it looks r rather good. Okay, uh, anyway, so sorry, but just to, you know, yeah, to no cut, uh, I don't want to cut the conversation, but I think that the problem is, uh, is clear, that the problem, that the topic is clear. So Andy can uh, dig a little more on that. And I feel, not speaking behalf of front end people, but that if we have to uh, adjust uh, the, the colors uh, and we know it uh, in two days or three days, uh, it will not be a very uh, dramatic change. So we can uh, allow Andy to do some research and to check. Uh, if the, the color is fine. Okay, perfect. Um, Just and one last comment on this. Yep. Uh, regarding the date colon, it's kind of confusing to me because in security, we have different dates. It could be the, the first time when we spotted the issue. It could be the last time when we spotted the issue. It could be mm -hmm. a lot of things. So we need could to- use a disclosure date. But we don't, yes. I would remove it because currently we don't have a readable information. Oh, yeah. so we don't, <laughs> we don't need it? Um, yeah, we need it, but- we need it, don't have it. Yeah, but we don't have the information, and if we had the information, we would need to be more precise than that. So in this first iteration, I would, I would remove the date completely. Yeah. I love everything we delete. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah, so. And I'm considering also if we need to show the confidence, probably yes, because we are sorting. Um, but uh, yes, should it be a full column? You know, we, a dedicated need, column for it. We need a column for the project anyway. So, if you oh no, if it, you it, to, can, it, it can be under the, under the name. I, I think the the file path doesn't bring any value at the group level. Who on the group will will go down to the code itself? I mean, if you and if you click on the vulnerability, you uh, will have the model, and then you will have a lyric link to the to the file already. So. I think we could leverage that line to, pro to provide some more useful information, like the project name, maybe some identifiers and things like that. That's a very good idea. I like it. And we can add the more information in the future if we feel that uh, they are very important. What do you think, Andy? Yes. 
Um, I saw that you mentioned that in the issue too, as well, Olivier, yeah. um, which is good. I think um, just trying to think of what happens when you want to sort by project. Oh, you'll see it. Yeah. I'm just trying to think if you need a column for project because you're sorting by something or sorry, filtering by it. Yeah. So you, I, don't, I don't think you do. You don't need the column because you will not click on the column uh, header to filter or to sort that you use uh, the, the drop downs. So it just yeah. results will be filtered and you see in all the lines, the same project name, but that's what was expected. Uh, so my, my last question here is, uh, do we need the confidence column? Or uh, can we, since sometimes, I don't know, I just want to save some space. I don't know if it's needed or not. But can't we add the confidence uh, information in the bottom line, in the second line, just, uh, I don't know, uh, project name and confidence? Just, just uh, I don't know how it will uh, look like, but... Uh, the issue is... So the, issue is that the value of confidence is not uh, meaningful by itself. You have to prefix yeah. it with confidence. So this might take some more spread there. So it's maybe an issue. Uh, you, you mean uh, you, you need to uh, specify that it's confidence? Yeah, because if yeah. you just put low or high, we don't know what it is about. No, so no, obviously yeah, just, you, you should push sense. the confidence low. So okay, I'm fine having a separate column for, for it. Oh, and uh, if possible, obviously the project name should be a link to the project. I'm just wondering, maybe the security dashboard at project level at this point, not mm -hmm. the project homepage. Because if um, you are... it's also missing, we're also missing the project link from the model. Um, so instead of file, it probably should say like, like a full path, you know, like project and then the file or something. Um, so like a, like a full, full link, so to say. Yeah, uh, I don't already, know yeah just having uh, Colin, uh, another, uh, another item project uh, with the link. Yeah, or uh, another. Yeah, and the, the challenge here for the project is what about subgroups? We should be, uh, you know, we should support uh, subgroups as well. MVC. Yes, MC, you mean that we don't support subgroups? No, I, I think we would just include all subgroups, but we don't support like subgroup filtering, for example, right? That, that's oh, something I, fun. But supporting all the projects in any subgroup would be awesome for an MVC. Yeah, I mean, because you basically just have, just have to iterate over the whole group, yeah. over all projects in a group, and each project in a subgroup also belongs, belongs to the top level group, right? I don't know how the backend yeah. code is structured. I'm just assuming. It's just I, a transit relationship, so it's really okay. Good. I yeah. just want to avoid the problem we had with uh, labels at the group level that were not propagating to subgroups. Uh, and so if we can manage everything here, it's fine. If we cannot go deep into a subgroup, uh, that will be improved later. But if we can do it in the MVC, absolutely fine with it. And then I agree, you don't have to filter by subgroup. Uh, but that is challenging, probably what you want to visualize in the project uh, dropdown. So how to render, but probably it's the same when you move an issue to a different repo, you can have, you know, the group slash the project name. So we just uh, remember to do a lot of, uh, you know, visual testing with uh, uh, subgroups in order to figure out if it's working and if it's looking uh, understandable, at least, <laughs> if not nice. Uh, Okay, the one other thing is, uh, do we want to have a title for this page? Just to state uh, that is a security dashboard. I know that probably is something we are not doing anywhere else. But no, we are not doing it anywhere else. But I was thinking because we said that the boxes are not dynamic, maybe we should have like an horizontal rule line thingy or something or... Uh, like an like a sentence that says uh, these are the, all the things and you can search them here. So just to differentiate all the byte space or however that you really because it's not interacting with each other now uh, at the moment we should probably um, have some yeah. separation. Yeah. So it, it makes a sort of a header at the top yeah. uh, with mm -hmm. the, the numbers. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And also. Um, 
I was wondering if we have the project now under the vulnerability, if it makes sense to switch to both drop downs so that we have severity project confidence because it matches the order in the in the table. Yeah. And um, just a general question, because I don't think we have such interactive lists right now, like used in GitLab, or I can't think of any because um, if you have an issue list, it's not that interactive. Uh, you have to open the single issue, right? And um, I understand why we have the models in the merge request, but um, in a previous endeavor, I always found out that models can be a bit annoying. Have we ever thought about like opening a sec, like that you can open the whole thing and that the, um, instead of a model, the details are like in a extensible row? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, just just in general, we don't have to do it for MVC because we have the models already in place. But I was yeah. wondering if this is something UX is ever thinking about, you know, um, mm -hmm. because I, I, I like instead, you know, because you open a model, you have to close it. And if you open, and, uh, if you're in front of critical, if there would be a small thing to open and close it, you could open it, see, ah, that's that vulnerability and close it right away. You don't have to move your cursor all the way and stuff like mm -hmm. that, you know. Um, no, I totally just, agree. Yeah, just an idea. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. We, that's a good improvement. Yeah, also we utilize the like, collapsing lists already. So yeah, uh, and also takes away the pain with uh, dual controls because then you also already have the controls in the in the original row and in the details row you don't have to re-add the controls for dismissing and approving and stuff like that. Uh, dismissing and uh, um, yeah, what's the other thing? Creating issue. Mm -hmm. Also, it seems that's also for, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry uh, for getting sidetracked, but that could be a thing for next version or. I don't absolutely. Know. That's totally appreciated. And now that we have this awesome design, the question is how can we make it real? <laughs> so, uh, do, no, my, just talking about that. The, the question is do we have uh, the information available into the database uh, in order to? have all of them uh, without parsing the artifacts. Uh, and the second question is, uh, how can front-end and back-end, uh, you know, exchange the information in the proper way? How the, the front-end, in your opinion, Lucas, uh, uh, could be structured or can we reuse something existing that is putting limitations into our choices? So, so I just had a look and basically the issues and merge requests uh, because I looked at the previous layout with the search bar, with the awesome search bar we have there. And um, these lists are still rendered in Hamel, so they are not touched in view. Um, I mean, the drop downs, yeah, we have drop downs, <laughs> um, several, so we could reuse that. But I don't know about the pagination. If we would do, and that's something I have to talk with the front end maintainers, if we want to do the pagination here on the front end side so that everything is via ajax or if we do it on the um on the back end side like the normal ruby pagin uh, pagination i don't know what the best course of action would be here um yeah if, if, other, if the pagination is a, an issue can we have um you know a long list and have this kind of big load more and you just pile on the in the page uh, not, um, not I have sure if it's easier for you or not. Not, not familiar with both uh, because I have, have um, I didn't have to create anything with it yet. So I will find out what the best is. Um, I don't think if you have three thousand five hundred issues, the uh, <laughs> uh, vulnerabilities that an endless scrolling list is the best thing. Um, but I have to check out whether we have pagination um, already available in view, so that you can use the API properly. Um, because I think we want to go API first and once we build that API, we should also build it in the public API or are you planning on building it in the non-public API way? Uh, what's the plan? There is I no think plan. that, yeah, there is no plan at the moment that I don't feel strong reasons to have uh, uh, it not in the public API. I don't know that the latest, uh, you know, agreement between front end and back end about the usage of public APIs or not, but I feel that this feature could be useful for you know building uh, integrations with other software, so someone else could ping GitLab to get this information. So it's yeah. good to have not a priority, obviously not in the MVC, uh, 
but uh, APIs are always welcome. Okay. The, um, yeah, and other than that, I don't think we have too much. Uh, I mean, we can reuse the model, obviously. We already have the model in place, so we don't have to deal with that. So we basically have to implement two things on the front end side. We have to implement, implement the top, which does one request and just renders the uh, ren renders all the, the, the summary. And then we have to have a paginated ABI where we can do all the filtering. I mean, at the moment, I'm only still, uh, seeing filtering by type, like dependency scanning, ZAST, and so on, severity, project, and confidence, and whether a thing is dismissed. I don't know if it's possible to get around with the dismissed thing or because it will mean more work on in the backend, right? Because the dismissed is currently in a different place in the uh, database. Or it's not, is it, it's not an issue. Okay. No, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I, I think that's completely possible for MVC here. Yeah. I just I one warning if you want to do it in the public API, it has more constraints than just a standard controller, even if it just use a similar API. I mean we can we can provide the data the exact same way, but putting it in the public API would add more work for us because we never did that before. So we have to check the constraints about doing so, the documentation, and we have to keep in mind that once we publish it there, we have to maintain it. So if we want to later do, do some do we, changes, we will have to maintain backward compatibility. Do we have a way to create beta endpoints? I mean, that we say, okay, we're creating that beta endpoint and the public API, and we also want you know user feedback from that new public API or whatever. And then three releases later, say this is like the version we are hammering in. Or um, do we have, uh, other uh, than that, I would say put it in the private API, but maybe in a way so that it can be moved easily to the public API once we stabilized on the uh, on the API itself, on the scheme, schema, sorry. Yeah, from the backend side, it's just a matter of where you put the file for the controller. <laughs> just that. But one, and once uh, on one place, you have a lot of things to work on, like documentation and uh, how, how did they do it with the JUnit reports? Are they now public API right right off the bat, or is it? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's just uh, an endpoint for on the merge request uh, private controllers. Okay, and so maybe go with uh, private and uh, keep in mind to open it up. Um, Maybe I can look at it if I have some spare time, but I won't go yeah. that way first. I think. Can, can um, we just just rewind a bit? I want to to wrap it up on the the UX part because I think yeah. we are really close to have something UX ready, but that we are missing one part in this is the, the interactions. It's not obvious to me what uh, this UI will. Um, how did this UI will uh, behave when I, for example, when I click on this miss vulnerability, what is going to happen? Are we going to strike through the vulnerability? Are we going to update the counters on the top? What's... Well, I don't think we would update the counters because uh, the counters would be still the same, right? Oh, that's a question. Do we count dismissed vulnerabilities? Huh. Uh, if I have 10 vulnerabilities that are critical and I click on them and dismiss them, if they are still in the counters, that means I will have to reload again and again. Counter, counters should not have vulnerabilities that have that been dismissed. Like we are changing, if I remember correctly, Lucas, in this iteration in the reports. So we are not counting them anymore in the, in the mod. We want to show them because people should be aware of it and it's the only way to undismiss uh, thing for now at least, but uh, I want to see zero if I dismiss everything because for me, they are not valid. They are not real vulnerabilities anymore. Yeah, I was, I was about to say the same thing. Like if I, I'll dismiss a vulnerability, I would assume that the counter uh, decrements, otherwise it's a bug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, but it's, it's again more work on the, on the front end. So I want to make sure that it's not an issue if we, if we do that. So you mean uh, the updating the counters? Yeah. Yeah. It, it would be no issue because we can just trigger reloading the data from the back end. And I mean, if you, sure. yeah. yeah. And, the, other, uh, the other spot would be to end the rule. 
because if you want to strike through and move it at the end of the page, that means you will have to remove that row and load another one. But also, nah, I don't think so. I think so. We would, uh, I think we would go like with the way with the to-dos. If you dismiss it, it will be strike through. And if you reload the page, it will be in the end. Because if you dismiss it, uh, you want, maybe it was an accident and you want to undismiss yeah. uh, right away. Yeah. You will have to go find it at the end of the list. So exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Totally makes sense. And as we, as we don't have like uh, a text search, it will be really hard to find the vulnerability in the thousands, right? <laughs> Also, awesome. we might need an undo. Oh, we can have, like in Gmail, you have a, a small tooltip with undo. <laughs> yeah, that, that should be. Like, I love the Gmail feature to undo things. I c uh, can I click on the, the metrics that are on the top of the page? Not in this version. Um, the, the summary, you mean? You the, the yeah, numbers? the metrics that are there, the numbers that are not clickable, just to make sure that I understand. If you click that, it's probably exactly the same as filtering by severity. Uh, so yeah, we, already we, have we don't need that for the MVP. No. Yeah, we no, already yeah. have the functionality, but we can improve it later, just clicking in order to have a shortcut. But we're, we're not adding a, a, a new functionality there, so it's not nice. a priority. Yeah. Another question, though, regarding the numbers. Do we, I mean, we don't, in the summary, in the top, we don't count it. Do we count it in the bubbles behind the dependency scanning and such? Or Makes because sense. for me, it will be completely confusing if the thing says you have zero ZAST vulnerabilities, but you click on it and you see all dismissed ones. Um, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, may, uh, just an idea because we have this dismissed button. Could we also have the dismissed button, whether you show them or not, just influence the counts? That would be the behavior I expect. Because if I don't want to see dismissed vulnerabilities, I will just toggle the thing off and uh, yeah, see them. Yeah, makes sense, but it should uh, impact only the, you know, the small bubbles with the numbers. Yeah. The, the top one, the, the summary ones, uh, will yeah. never consider dismissed uh, okay. numbers. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And uh, if we are not having more than dependency scanning for the first iteration, probably we don't want to have the tabs. Uh, tabs. It would be SAS. Oh, SAS is the first uh, yes. candidate. So SAS ah. is already done. Okay, so do we want to have the SAS uh, tab? And so we have all sources and SAS that are exactly the same, or can we just uh, choose one of the two in order to avoid people to, you know, wondering what's the difference between the two? Shouldn't we, shouldn't we then just put a notice in, in the top and say, at the moment, it only supports SAS? Mm, that's... <laughs> I mean, it seems not a, a very good looking uh, uh, thing, but uh, I'm open to. You know, I mean, we could also just yeah. call it security dashboard and in hyphen in, in brackets, we can call SAST. And once we add the other ones, we will just remove the I, SAST. And I, never, I never saw uh, any kind of, you know, limitation announced uh, into the product itself. I don't think it's uh, one of our patterns. So okay. I'm quite, you know, uh, not saying no, but probably is the no, uh, not, not the best option. Uh, anyway, not, uh, you know, something that you can figure out. Uh, I, I would leave that in there, uh, just put SAS in the first, uh, in the first place as the tabs. Yeah. And the other tabs could be there, but just in gray. And if really we can do that, uh, mm. we can have- We also a, could oh. have the empty illustration thingy, which we have on other pages. If you go exactly. there, there's nothing. And no, I, I really don't think so. And so empty stages is one of my uh, next questions. So, and that's the boring uh, you know, thing. We need uh, empty states. Uh, we need uh, loading states and this kind of you know, standard states, transitional states. If you put an empty state or a grayed out thing, it means that uh, the feature is existing and you are expected to have something and you have nothing for this specific uh, uh, instance, I don't know to say this uh, dashboard. But if we know in advance uh, that uh, you will never see something because uh, the feature is not even implemented, it maybe confusing for users to see SAS at zero. Uh, no, sorry, SAS will be the one. Uh, container scanning zero. They may expect, okay, I cannot click, uh, but there are no vulnerabilities for container scanning. Then you go at the project level and you find that you have uh, 1,000 vulnerabilities. No, it's not, not what well, I meant. If you, you, you just disable the tab and you have an over 
with a, a tooltip saying that it's not implemented yet and it's going to be uh, in the next release. Frankly speaking, I don't like it because uh, it's not, let's say it's not something that is uh, the GitLab uh, current pattern, but, but I we, think that but, is but only UX pattern. We use pattern like that. I did an auto DevOps uh, thing yesterday where I showed auto DevOps and Kubernetes and stuff. And there we have like beta things all over the place and we just plainly write this is wow. not should not be <laughs> it's not beta anymore so but, but anyway. no, no, no 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 i mean uh, but on some specific things i already saw it and i think it would be completely safe yeah. uh, in settings like uh, in settings i say yes uh, but i don't no. know in the in the feature itself uh, because uh, you know this is the user facing part uh, no. in the settings you may expect to see some additional but anyway maybe and I mean, uh, you if know. we only do Zast, we should transport the message that it's only Zast for the moment, right? I agree. Yeah, and that should it, be just we have uh, one tab that is named Zast. But, why do but you I don't have... know why you don't see the others. Yeah, I will I help you to decide because we have to deal with that anyway, even if the features are ready. Because what if your project doesn't have configured Zast? Do you want to have the Zast column always showing? Yeah, that's, that's a good that. point. So we have to decide whether we want to it to be static or dynamic based on project configuration. And this and is a hard part right now. That was going to suggest that let's implement at least two so we don't have the problem, but the problem is <laughs> there. <laughs> That's the easy solution, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, I just remove the tabs. We have one on Monday. And <laughs> if, uh, if, so we have we just, have if we are just sassed for this iteration, just remove that line at all. And yeah. yeah, we so, sorry, we just have seven minutes uh, left, uh, so I just want to be sure that we are covering uh, almost everything. So I feel that maybe Andy could uh, try to understand uh, a good UX uh, to you know uh, manage uh, if you lack one report, if you miss one report, or if you don't have it because we are not implementing it yet. So, so the, um, Andy, I just want to be sure you um, put a note about empty states, uh, transition states. Uh, uh, so uh, just, just to, you know, they so, are needed yeah. at some point. I, I have the feeling that we have covered everything there and we are really close to have something UX ready, right? Oh, I think so. I think it's just what we want to say here. It seems like Fabio is against saying anything that hints at us not being ready. And then some other people feel like that there's... Oh, and I have a good, uh, a good point on this. If you look at the yeah. pipelines page, uh, and uh, you know we have now security reports and license management, uh, and those tabs, uh, the pipeline view, are shown only if you have the report. Otherwise, but you, are but you have other you have other tabs there. That's the point. From a UX perspective, it makes no sense to show a tabbing interface if there will always be one tab. It uh, makes no sense. <laughs> Uh, no, because if you just have the pipeline, I don't know, maybe because you have pipeline and jobs, maybe. I'm not sure yeah. if you don't have any report, if you have just one tab or multiple tabs. No, you, you always have more than one tab on the pipelines page. 100% hmm. sure. Okay. Uh, anyway, yeah. Andy, uh, something probably you can figure out. I think that yeah. is not blocking yeah. the start of the development. Uh, mm -hmm. So even if it takes uh, a couple of days to, to be figured out, uh, uh, to be fine. So uh, just back on you, Fabian and Olivier, do you feel that uh, everything we just uh, agreed on uh, is doable with the current uh, structure of the database uh, that you worked on? Yeah, I would say we've got everything in the database and it's even better than it was because uh, the, the location has been replaced with um, the name of project, which is already in the database. Whereas the, the location, the full location is uh, part of a JSON blob. Uh, so it's it's even better. We we got everything. Um, I'm pretty sure. Um, maybe I should yes. take the time to check that. Um, Olivier, I think there is someone behind you. <laughs> yeah, no, there's there's a some thumbs up all the time. Yeah, actually. she agrees with that. <laughs> oh, him <even> too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, next steps probably are uh, for Andy to you know address uh, all the. The, the questions that we put there, sorry, there are a lot, but at least we should be covering everything and come uh, with uh, the final proposal, let's say proposal, but it would be probably the final version as soon as possible, even because we may need uh, the design uh, for, uh, you know, the announcement and this kind of thing. So 
maybe it's a good idea to push uh, this one. I don't know, whatever it is it, just update the current one uh, in the issue that is uh, worse than the, this one. And then you can iterate on top of the design. So it's not too X-ray yet, but at least it's very near to. Uh, and then on, uh, uh, I know that the merge request about the um, database structure is having, you know, some hard times to, uh, to be finished and merged. I already asked Camilla to work closely with you. I, we should have an answer about his availability later today. So I hope that he will help us in this story as part of you know, the team. Um, and uh, if we can agree an API between front end and back end, uh, and uh, just you know, ensure that uh, information in the API will be available by the database, uh, it would be awesome. And uh, the front end could be a little unrelated, you know, um, unlinked uh, by the back end. And so development can start as soon as possible. Yeah, just, just one more question. Uh, uh, so there's the, the name of the project, um, like here, Secret Products. And I don't know where it um, redirects to the browser when we click on the, on the link. Uh, I've, got, I've got many ideas on that, but uh, what would be your answer, Andy? Uh, it, for... can't, it can't be to me. It would make sense to to redirect to the project itself. So it could be yeah. the security dashboard of the particular project um, in the particular context of that particular issue. Uh, we could either redirect to, in the case of SAS, um, we could redirect to the exact file and exact line so where it's if I, if I may stop you there because Fabio said before that if you click on the vulnerability name, you open the model. And if you click on the other thing and you go somewhere else, I think it's a bit confusing because both links are in the same column, uh, in the same cell. Oh, great. It, yeah, it's even better. Yeah, great. But maybe, just, maybe just have yeah. the link to the project to open the project in the model. And then yeah. you need to but then it should. But, it, but you're right, you still need to define where to go if you click the project uh, somewhere. Yeah, but then it shouldn't yeah. be the model. Yeah, yeah. The, the color should be the same, all, all black, maybe. Like I don't know. The grayish one, I mean. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's good Guys, point. Okay, any other last uh, moment comment? Uh, otherwise, there is an FGU starting in one minute. Uh, and uh, I, I feel you're all excited by this feature. <laughs> all, a lot of work to it. do, but, and I will push a little, you know, to get uh, sometimes updates and to ensure that everything is working as, the, as fine and uh, we are not blocked or uh, waiting for something. So I will try to be you know, a little project management uh, helper. Uh, so we will go to success for this feature. And thank you, really thank you to everyone for your availability and uh, we'll wait uh, for the new mock-up to be there and feel free to discuss yeah, about can, technical can things. Can we just schedule a, a meeting for the, the rest? We just covered the first point and we have two other points. The, the the source of information and API, can we do a, the same meeting yeah. tomorrow or at the same time? Could, could you schedule it, Philippe? Yeah, Since absolutely. it's more an engineering uh, story, so you can- do, do, we, do we use the same document? Because I would just- No, it right. Okay, um, because I, I'm going to write down an API proposal beforehand from the front end perspective, like a really top level. I, I think that, that it's you. better to use the issue itself yeah. Or okay. uh, if it's a very you know, proposal you don't want to share uh, uh, until it's uh, validated, uh, please create a new document and then put in the issue. It should be in okay. the issue at the end as soon as it's in uh, good uh, shape. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank awesome you, everyone. With you. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.